soil. A good soil is a life-giving entity. What we're about to learn from this famous soil scientist is that healthy soil, if not ruined first by deforestation and pesticides, is our greatest ally in combating disease such as COVID-19 and reversing climate change. His work so far to save our soil has saved or improved the lives of billions of people around the planet. The gentleman scholar behind this mask is Dr. Ratan Lal, who shared the Nobel Prize with Al Gore in 2007 as a member of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and more recently, the prestigious World Food Prize for his soil-saving techniques benefiting the livelihoods of 500 million smallholder farmers around the globe. Law improving the world food supply and the nutritional security for more than two billion people. Dr. Lal teaches at The Ohio State University, known for its legendary marching band and championship football. Lal, arguably the school's greatest treasure as distinguished university professor of soil science. Soil is the basic resource from where everything comes. In his youth, Lal's family migrated from then British India, now Pakistan, to northern India, where dust storms, he says, on his family's subsistence farm inspired him to study soil. I remember very vividly uh, being caught in a dust storm and trying to find a shelter and trying to understand where this dust comes from and what the cause of it, uh, how can you mitigate it. Dr. Lal says he learned that dust is just one deadly byproduct of unhealthy soil. In other words, soil that's been mismanaged, overworked, devastated by deforestation. Soil that's been degraded and depleted of nutrients vital for growing quality food. And the people who are having poor quality food obviously are more susceptible to diseases, such as the COVID-19 pandemic. And in this case, the long-term solution is people having healthy diet. A healthy diet is a medicine. If the diet is good, there is no need for medicine. If the diet is no good, medicine has no use either. So I think that's the direct correlation between them. And the healthy soil is essential for people to have a healthy environment in which they live, especially the quality of the water, soil, and the air. It was in 1970 when Dr. Law began investigating the issue of soil erosion and degradation in sub-Saharan Africa. He found that deforestation and agricultural cultivation exposed the soil to the harsh tropical climate, causing severe erosion. Additionally, removing the plant residue at harvest robbed the soil of nutrients, organic matter, and organic carbon, making it more difficult each season for farmers to grow a viable crop. His research shows that growing crops on healthy soils produces more from less, more food from less land area, less use of agrochemicals, less tillage, less water and energy, and that soils also provide essential environmental services such as retaining rainwater and filtering pollutants and providing habitat for all kinds of organisms. This in turn improves the long-term sustainability of agroecosystems and minimizes the risks to farmers of droughts, floods, and other effects of a changing climate. All part of Dr. Lal's research as founding director of the Carbon Management and Sequestration Center here on the Ohio State campus. These books are all written by me. These are all edited by me. Uh, about 105. 105 books? Yeah. Books that have been cited by world leaders and the United Nations, particularly in recent years to combat climate change. Climate change, Law says, partially caused by gases coming from soil degradation. We have created this problem of soil degradation, climate change. People talk about climate change. They do not realize most of the gases
the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, they have been coming from soil into the atmosphere. And now is the time to put them back. Over the years, Dr. Lal has had hundreds of grad students and PhD students assisting him in research. Presently, there's graduate student Patricia Cordero. Drum roll, please. <laughs> and PhD student Nao Munilal. And lab technician Kyle Sklanka. You look like a Kyle. <laughs> Much of their research is how to best reduce atmospheric CO2 through sustainable land management practices. Dr. Lal recently joined forces with the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation and Agriculture to launch a program called Living Soils of the Americas that promotes efficient conservation agriculture so it can help farmers prevent climate change. So far, it has been successful in Brazil and Chile. They also investigate healthy soil strategies to grow healthier food so less people are undernourished. Globally, we have about 700 million people who are undernourished. Of this number, 132 million has been increased because of the COVID-19. So we have almost 830 million people who are food insecure. Here in the United States, 40 million people are food insecure. In Ohio, 1.7 million, almost 2 million people are food insecure. Very susceptible to diseases such as COVID-19. We have half a million children in Ohio who are food insecure. Dr. Law strongly advocates that kids learn at an early age that good soil is the key to healthy food. We have lost touch that this Food comes from soil, not necessarily from a grocery store. And says elementary schools to colleges should be offering a course about how healthy soil is directly linked to healthy people. The need for a course that teaches the link between soil health, plant health, animal health, human health, environmental health, and the health of the planet itself. And uh, this course should be taught right from the primary school onward. Okay. Primary school children should have an opportunity yeah. to Perfect. work on a healthy soil. They should feel the soil. They should feel the earthworms in the soil. They should see it, that soil is a teeming with life. And it is this soil from where the food comes from. At the moment, Dr. Lal is overseeing a water retention test on soils sent here from around the world. If the soil has too much water, we try to drain it. Can you bring a soil from India, for example, and bring it to your lab here yes, and test it? Yes, we do. In fact, we do bring them from India, from Pakistan, from Brazil, from China, and we do all the tests. The students who bring the soil sample here, they may be doing their PhD or master thesis research. Certainly, we share that, yeah. Uh, we had students from all around the world. Yes, they have come here to learn, but I must tell you, that I learn at least as much from them as they learn from me. For example, grad student Patricia Cordero, from Puerto Rico, by the way, is presently researching soil from avocado orchards back home. The goal of her research? Which soil is better for food production than the other? The results, she says, ultimately, she will share with soil and agricultural officials back in Puerto Rico. There isn't a lot of support for agricultural and for farmers back home. It is on the rise because this, this new generation, the one that came before me and, and my one specifically, we are gaining more interest in agriculture and we do know the importance that it has. And because we are aware of the food security issue, it is something that is slowly changing. What needs to urgently happen here on the U.S. mainland, says Dr. Lal, is for the U.S. government to pass a Healthy Soil Act much like the Clean Air Act and Clean Water Act passed decades ago. Do you know we have no Healthy Soil Act? How is it ever possible to have clean air, clean water, healthy food, and not have a Healthy Soil Act? If U.S. Next Farm Bill would have a Healthy Soil Act, then those three components of the environment, soil, air, and water, will get equal respect 
Dr. Law says more than a century ago, the health of soil was so important to evolutionist Charles Darwin that Darwin wrote his last book about soil, entitled The Formation of Vegetable Mold Through the Action of Worms. How earthworms are nature's most efficient plows of the soil. And this soil is an example of a very healthy soil that can produce all the essential ecosystem services for all living beings on the planet. And one important concept to remember that the health of soil, plants, animal, people, environment, and the planet is one and indivisible. Dr. Lal is nearly 80 years old, but says he has no immediate plans to retire. His work, educating the world about preserving the health of soil around the globe, too important, he says, to stop now. Before COVID struck, Dr. Lal routinely worked 12-hour days doing research, but has since been working mostly from home. His time at home during the COVID pandemic has given him more time with his wife, Suk, an occupational therapist. More time to catch up on life, they say, and on Dr. Lal's world-changing work. They've been married for more than 50 years. Our, ours was arranged marriage through uh, mutual family friends, arranged marriage. Yeah. Now, did it work out? <laughs> we, are, we are still yeah, together. <laughs> Dr. Law is not at all bothered by those who say he often spends more time with soil than he does his own family. The best soil, a very good example. You talk about soil like it's a family member. Soil is more than a family member. Soil is a living entity. As a living entity, like any other living entity, soil has rights. Just like bald eagle have rights, like butterfly has rights, like panda has a right, like humans have rights, soils have rights. Soil must be treated respectfully. It must be protected. Whole world is one family with respect and dignity and love. Soil as a media that binds us together. We all live on one earth, planet A. There's no planet B.